Okay. So this is uh, anatomy, kinesiology, chapter 21, lesson one. So first we're looking at, so, so we're looking at the skeleton, right? But every bone in the skeleton has little depressions, markings, bumps and nodules that the tendons and ligaments um, attach to. Um, just like if you have a anything with 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 a with a smooth surface, if you're going to put down some glue on something, you're going to use some sandpaper, kind of scratch it up, and then add the glue so the glue can actually connect into the the fibers of the fabric of the material, whatever whatever you're 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 cooking together. The bones are very smooth. So you're going to have to have different areas where it's a kind of a, like a rough surface. You see how there's like a rough surface here versus a smooth surface here. There's like little kind of bony um, protuberances here that the, the tendons can connect to. Okay. So let's go over the actual kind of um, descriptions of the different Depressions or openings of the bony markings. All right, so first we have a process. So a process is a prominent projection or prolongation extending from a bone. So, for example, in the clav, in the uh, excuse me, in the scapula, right. You see this little thing right here? It's like a little pinky finger sticking out. So if we go into detail mode, you're gonna see, you're gonna have the coracoid process. So this is, it says a projection or prolongation. So you see how it's projecting from this scapula. Okay. Then we have the acromion, which is also um, a process, but these two things protrude from the this large flat bone here, if you will. Okay. Next we have a protuberance. So think of a tuber as like, if you think of a tuber in general, I personally think of a actual like a root, like a, a yam, pamica, um, potato, right? So we're going to go to, we can find it here. And we'll show me the actual like so okay we'll just go to the occipital bone and see if we can get out of here all right here all right so so we've got a process here i'm not thinking it so, so process, it's jutting out. Protuberance is going to be a knob-like protrusion. So you see how it's sort of like a a doorknob, I guess, or or a knob. If you, you know, like in cartoons, if you got hit in the head with a mallet, it'll make like a little knob on their head. But like this is considered a knob. Versus this is more of a protuberance where it's sticking out of this main bone. Sorry, a, a process. Protuberance, this is more of a process. Okay. Now, we have a ramus, which is a long branch-like prolongation of a bone. 
So if we go to the jaw here, so you see how the jaw comes together here and then it comes up and just, just off of this bottom part. So this, from this line here, the size of your jaw minus the teeth is gonna be the ramus. So this is a long branch like you see how kind of the branches come off uh, from the actual mandible body. So the body is usually like the main thing, just like the body of a paragraph. And like you have like the header of the body and then like the footer. So this is like the main area, and then whatever juts off of that is going to be considered the excessive or extra portion. All right. So now we got a ridge. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So, see if we can get them here. So we have uh, we have a epicondyle here. Let's see if we can actually mark it up in this thing here. Um, I'm just going to show it. I don't know. It's not going to show, but um, so a ridge is a elongated projection of a bone. So you can think of like um, like a ridge on a mountaintop, where you 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 kind of climb up to the mountaintop, and then there's this kind of peak area, right? And then um, it goes down the other side. Right, so there's there's places where um, the the bone is very thin, and then the the tendons will will attach onto that ridge to be on one side of the of the bone. Right, so abduction, adduction, that muscle is going to be attached onto that side of the bone. And of course, this is the, the end of the elbow, so it's going to be more of um, more, more on the side here and then on the forearm to actually control the upper and lower arm. All right, so now we get, we're looking at a spine. So as we can see, our spine, this is the spine here, and it's gonna be a sharp slender projection. So you can see how our spine looks like a blade, like a razor blade or a saw. So sharp projections right here. Something else that is sharp, if you look up here, is going to be the spine of the scapula. So you see how this blade actually comes out of the scapula. So this is the spine of the scapula. Okay. And then this is the kind of line of demarcation. So if you go up here and down below, you have a fossa, which is an indentation. So you think of here's kind of a hill and down of the mountain, there's like the forest. So it's, it's an indentation where it's flat enough that, that trees can, can be planted and they can thrive. So you have a you have the infraspinous fossa, infra meaning below, spinous meaning spine, you know, fossa area, forest. And then you have the supraspinous fossa because it's above the spine. So supra, infra. 
Same thing with the muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus. They're going to be labeled from where they are in relation to this spine. Okay. Then you'd have kind of borders here and then angles um, because of, of the actual angle shape there, right? That's just kind of the, the line. But these are like the bony landmarks here in the middle because the muscles attach to these areas. All right. So now we're going to look at a trochanter. So you look at the body. If you if you do a T, a T is going to go down and across, right? So the T is at the top of the T. So above the femur on the top side is going to be the trochanters. And the trochanter is a large rounded projection found only in the femur. But just think of the direction of the femur. If you draw T, the top of the T is, is where they're going to be. So you have the greater trochanter because obviously it's larger than the lesser trochanter. All right. Okay. Then you have like a tubercle, which is going to be a uh, a rounded projection from a bone, usually blunt and irregular. Okay, so we have the the, the adductor tubercle, uh, which I don't know if they're going to put in here. That's a tuberosity there. Uh, no, it's like down here. Okay. I don't think they're going to show it. No. That's okay. Uh, and then we have a tuberosity, which is going to be a large, a large rounded. So, so tubercle is going to be a rounded projection, usually, usually smaller. And then a tuberosity is going to be a large rounded um, and roughened projection. Right, so if we go to a common portion is the deltoid tuberosity. Let's see if they'll show it here. Um, if you can see it, it's like a it's like a protrusion out of the bone. It's very slight though. But like I said, it's rough. Yeah, it's very like it's very rough. So the deltoid kind of comes down here and then attaches. I don't know if you can see the difference. It's a slight raise here. So can we see it differently if we look at the tibial tuberosity? Um there's the there's the ischial tuberosity, but it's very slight. It's just it's easier to look at it probably on the actual skeleton, but it's very slight. If you if you run your fingers down, you'll feel a a kind of a rough bump. But it's 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 kind of hard to see there. But that's why they they've highlighted it with the with the color here. Because you can see it's just it's just like a little you see that that little raise here com comparatively to the smooth surface of the yellow portion of the humerus. But yeah, so a large round rough and rough projection. So it's like think of like a mini hill versus a mountain. All right, so now. We're going to um, the spine, and we're looking at the opening of the spine. So you have the foramen here. So it's like if we if we look at the nervous system, it comes out of these holes. 
between each vertebra. Right? So we have actual opening here. So a foramen is a opening through a bone or bones that usually serves as a passage for blood vessels, nerves, or ligaments. So this is the intervertebral foramen because it's in between two vertebrae. So there's one here and then one down below, which this makes one half of the circle, the, the other side makes the other half of the circle, and it's a hole where when the spinal cord comes through here, it's going to run and branch out of this portion to innervate the rest of the body. Okay. Then we're going to have another indentation, which is going to be on the sternum. And they're going to be little facets. So you're going to have. Not. So you have small flattened shallow depressions that articulate with another with an, another bone. So I think of if you seen or you know if you have kids and they have the button up jacket where it's like the large button that you click and you click it in like those those are like facets on a on um the clothing. So what's happening here is the rib is actually Coming in, it's not going to. The rib is coming in and it's connecting into these small notches here. On the skeleton, it probably is better. The, the, there's more of an indentation here, but it's going to show where the where the the costals, the ribs, connect to that sternum. Okay. Next, we have a groove is a linear depression accommodating another structure. So, um, for example, the intertubercular groove All right. So, just like the the trochanter, so we have the let me go to the here. So we have the greater tubercle, larger one, lesser tubercle. Right? So this is at the top, like it's a T, T at the top, tubercle in the femur is going to be trochanter. Right? So, in between these two landmarks, the big mountain and small mountain, in the valley, this is going to be the actual groove because it's in between these two things. Just like, you know, if something is groovy or, or a groovy record or whatever, they, like they, they're referring to a good song that's played on the actual record with the needle going in between the grooves of the record that records the sound on the record player. So this is literally like in between these two mountains. All right, then we're gonna go to a notch. You think of a notch as if you take a knife and you go to a tree and you chip out your, your name, you're gonna put little notches into the tree. All right. So they're going to show there's a tubercle there. Then you get the shaft down here. And then here is the other dorsal tubercle process. Right, you get the, the neck and the head, but there should be like a small notch in here, which they're not showing, but it's just like a little small indentation, right? So a, a deep indentation 
or a narrow gap in the bone. Okay. And lastly, we have our sinuses. Whenever you think of sinuses, you think in the face, right? So there's actual uh, cavities in the back of our skull. Let's see if I can do the both skull here. And then can I do this? Well, yeah, I don't know if they're going to show it. It's like in here. I don't think they show it here because this is like the actual uh, bone structure, but on the other one, like in your face, in the skull, there's, there's, there's pockets. And there, there are these air pockets. They're, they're sinuses. So whenever you you breathe in through through your your nasal passage, right, it's going to go into um, these these little holes, and then and then go into a sinus, like a pocket. And this is what actually creates resonance when when we speak, so we don't sound like we're underwater. So if I block my nose, then I sound like I'm underwater and I can't speak because the, the sound is not coming in and resonating through these, these sinuses. So whenever we get like sinusitis, bacteria gets in there, mucus comes in to, to try and clear out that, that bacteria, those pathogens, whatever's in there. And then um, there's that inflammation and it closes up the, the sinus cavity or like the, the actual, the opening of the sinus and then the bacteria gets caught inside of the sinus and then causes inflammation. And then you get the, that like pressure headache when, you, when you're sick. That's, that's that, that, that sinusitis, like that's what, you know, is, is happening. And then you, of course, want, want to rub above your, your, in your forehead and your, in your cheeks. So like where, where those sinuses are, you want to like put pressure on there with your hands to kind of relieve the pressure that's going on. But you know, they're, they're, they're in their pockets inside of the skull made for that residence. All right. So next we're going to go to we're going to go to the bones and joints of the upper extremity. Right, so the upper extremity is going to be the upper arm, lower arm, hand, and remember the clavicle and the scapula connect to the humerus and make up the upper extremity. So, so it's not just the humerus alone, but the scapula and the clavicle together make up the upper extremity. So first going into the clavicle, you see it, it attaches here to the sternum and then comes over and attaches to the scapula. So breaking it down, we have the, the shaft of the clavicle. And this, this is actually broken into thirds. So depending on your, your descriptors, of, of where you're looking for uh, muscles that are attached to this, it's going to be the yeah the lateral third or the medial third. But then we have the sternal end because it is attached to the sternum. Then we have the acromial end because it is it is attached to the acromion. So you see how you have these these ligaments that that are attaching here. So the sternoclavicular ligament from the sternum to the clavicle putting the name together, sternoclavicular. So it's pretty self-explanatory once you understand the main bones, the main parts of the bones, then, you know, it's going to make sense once you get into the joints. So we have the acromion here. Then we have the acromioclavicular ligament. Pretty simple there. 
All right, now going to the scapula. All right, so starting at the acromion, it looks kind of like a, I don't know, I think of like a, a, a shield, but however you want to remember this, I think of a chromion, I think of like a, a, a Greek warrior, like somebody from 300 battling and they got a big shield. Um, then we have the spine, of course, and then we have the acromial angle. So it literally just like is a part of the acromion, and you can see it makes this kind of triangle here on the bottom. So that's just the angle of the acromion. Then we go above. Remember the supraspinous fossa, or the forest, infraspinous fossa, and then we have the actual scapular neck. So you can think of like a turtleneck. It's his head popping out. Then in here, you have the glenoid fossa or glenoid cavity. This is where the humerus actually sits in to articulate into this socket. Then we have the supraglenoid tubercle. Remember, supra meaning above, it's superior to the glenoid cavity, glenoid fossa, and it is a tubercle, right, which is a rounded projection from a bone. So a blunt, irregular projection, which is super, super tiny. You can barely see it there. Then we have the super, the, sorry, the spine, spinoglenoid notch, so like I said, if you're carving out a tree, you're carving your name, you're carving a notch out of, out of the tree, out of the bark, out of the wood. So this is gonna be this kind of indentation that you're carving out. And, and because it's part of the spine, it's gonna be the spinolenoid notch, All right? Then you got the suprascapular notch. Because this is the scapula, this is above the scapula. So, it's it's memory, but also it's it's kind of common sense. Once you figure out the location of it, you can kind of deduce what the word is saying. All right. So now we have the borders of the scapula. So we have different, we have different muscles that attach to the borders of the scapula that move the scapula up, down, left, right. Um, scapular tipping and all this, all, all these different movements. So above, you have the superior border, the medial border, the lateral border. So let's look at it this way. So medial border, closer to the spine, lateral border, far, farther, farthest away from the spine, superior border on top. Then you have the actual corners of the triangle. So you got the superior angle and you got the inferior angle. So... When we, look, when we look at movement of the scapula, as it tips and it pivots, think of this inferior angle being like an arrow. If the arrow points in or points out, that's what you're looking at when, when it moves. Because there's, there's, there's so many points to focus on as the scapula moves, but as it tilts and it pivots kind of around the clock, then this, this bottom arrow is going to be a good reference to look at. Okay. So that so now we have another tubercle here, which is the infraglenoid tubercle. Again, the glenoid cavity or glenoid fossa. You got the superglenoid and then the infraglenoid, inferior. Then underneath this portion is actually right up on your ribs. So this is going to be the subscapular fossa. So sub meaning below. So if this person was actually laying face down on the table, now this portion is the top and this portion is the bottom. So this is actually below, even though they're standing up. It's a bit confusing, but just think of them laying down. This is like the shark fin at the top. 
and then you got below here. Okay. Now we're going down to the actual humerus or the upper arm bone. All right, so the shaft. Think of a turtle. You've got the the neck. So, so this is called the surgical neck because if somebody got a shoulder replacement, they would actually cut at this line and put in a artificial shoulder or artificial portion of the bone to go into the, the, the scapula, right? So that's why it's called the surgical neck. Then we have the head of the scapula, the neck, and then the surgical neck, okay? Then again with the T, tubercle, greater, lesser, enter, tubercle, tubercular groove. So this is in between both of those tubercles here. All right, going down, you got the deltoid tuberosity where the actual deltoid muscle comes down and attaches here. So you see how the shape of the, the arm makes the deltoid, it comes down in here and attaches onto that part of the bone. Then we're going down towards the elbow. This is the inside of the elbow. We have down here, we have the trochlea, which this part is gonna connect down to the ulna and radius. Down here, the forearm. On each side, we're gonna have the epicondyle. So epicondyle, the medial epicondyle, closest to the body. Then we have the lateral epicondyle, part of the, away from the body. And then we have the capitulum. Think of like a pitcher's arm. When, when, a, when a baseball pitcher lifts his arm up to pitch, this portion is going to be up in the air, away from the body. We have your coronoid fossa. Remember, the fossa is the indentation, the forest, kind of a flat area where trees can, can grow if this was like a mountain ridge. All right. We got that, epicondyle, that epicondyle. Then we have the olecranon fossa. Again, uh, indentation. So indentation on the back of the elbow and then indentation in the front of the elbow. Then back here, we're gonna have the radial groove, because this is literally a groove on a record on the radial side where the humerus connects to the radius down here. And think radius, like in geometry, where you have a circle, you have a dot, and then the outside of the circle is like the radius where you draw that line to the outside of the circle from the dot in the middle. Okay. Now going down to the forearm. So this is the brachial area. This is the antibrachial area. So you have the radius, which is on the, on the outside, like I said, of the circle. Then you have the ulna, which is closest to the body on the inside. This is when the person is, is in anatomical position with their palms facing forward. Okay, so always starting there first. But otherwise, if you start with your hand in a different position, it'll be confusing and you'll lose track of which side you're looking at. All right, so looking at the radius, So the head, remember, attaches to the right under the capitulum on the humerus here. You get the head, you got the neck, got the shaft. Then over here we have the radius tubercle. Remember, just like a tuber on a 
potato, which is like a little bump there. All right. And then down at the end of the shaft here, attached to your, your wrist, carpal bones, going to have the styloid process. So think of a stylus like a pen that you draw on your iPhone. And then on the medial side, we have the ulnar notch. So you see how it's like a kind of an indentation here. It's not, you know, the biggest notch, but there's a kind of a, a carving out. Mm -hmm. Then we have the dorsal tubercle. So on the back side of the wrist, it looks like, like a dorsal fin on a dolphin, right? Because it's on the back of the hand. Okay. Now looking at the ulna, shaft, trickle your notch. So it's going to be like a literal notch, so you can't miss this here. Then we have the olecranon. All right, this is making up elbow here. Radial notch. Cor coronoid process. So again, a process that actually actually coming off a little protrusion there. Then you have the ulna tuberosity, just like the deltoid tuberosity, that small rough shaped groove or protrusion here. All right, then we got the head of the ulna. So this one's a, a bit different because the head is down at the wrist. So this one is flipped, is flipped around. Then you got the styloid process of the ulna, just like a styloid pin. If you took this bone, you could write on a screen. Okay. Lastly, we're looking at the wrist and hand. So, take away all these ligaments to actually see what's going on here. All right, and you, can, and you can see all of these are, are individual bones and they're held together by these, these ligaments here. All right, so you have your carpal bones here, all right, that actually have this, this plantar surface and when you move the wrist, they slide around on each other, allowing you to have that very intricate wrist movement. Then in the palm, in the middle of the hand, so so if the fingers, if your fingernails are the end of your of your hand, this is going to be the middle of the hand, and it, and, and this could be your metacarpals, right? So in the middle of your carpals and the end of your of your fingers, All right? So we got metacarpal one which starts at the thumb, then we count inward, two, three, four, five. Where it breaks here, these sections here, these three sections are going to be your phalanges or your fingers. So we have the, we have the first, second, and third phalanx. This is the third because you're, we're counting down, so we're counting from left to right and then from bottom up towards the metacarpals. So this is the third proximal phalanx. So it's the third section, proximal meaning closest to the midline of the body. Okay. This is the middle phalanx, obviously because it's in between the first and the third. And then we have the distal phalanx because remember distal 
on the extremities, is the, the squirrel is running towards your fingers into the distance. If the squirrel is running from your hand to your shoulder, it's running proximal. Or the pistol is distal, as the guy said on the video. Okay, and that wraps up lesson one, anatomy, kinesiology, 